Thank you. Good afternoon. Today, I'm going to be presenting the results of an investigator-initiated study testing PD-1 blockade in tumors with mismatch repair deficiency. The hypothesis behind this study is as follows. Mutations have been shown to encode proteins that can be recognized and targeted by the immune system. The average tumor has dozens of mutations. These are called mismatch repair proficient tumors. In contrast, tumors deficient in mismatch repair can harbor hundreds or thousands of mutations as a result of dysfunctional DNA repair. This has led to the hypothesis that immune augmentation with PD-1 blockade may be highly effective in mismatch repair deficient tumors. To test this hypothesis, we conducted a phase two study in three cohorts of patients. The first two cohorts of patients are patients with colorectal cancer. In cohort A, we studied 25 patients with colorectal cancer and mismatch repair deficiency. These are also termed microsatellite instability high, and this is due to the tendency for these errors to occur in repetitive DNA sequences called microsatellites. In cohort B, we would recruit 25 patients with mismatch repair proficient colorectal cancer, and these are called microsatellite stable tumors. And in cohort C, we would enroll 21 patients with non-colorectal cancer with mismatch repair deficiency, so any tumor type. Patients would receive the Merck anti-PD-1, which is pembrolizumab, at 10 mg per kg every two weeks. And the co-primary endpoints were immune-related 20-week progression-free survival rate, so essentially the percentage of patients with stable disease for 20 weeks or longer, and response rate. Immune criteria allow for the incorporation of new lesions without necessarily deeming the treatment a failure if the patient is overall responding. Microsatellite instability testing was performed using standard PCR-based testing. These are the objective responses in the first 48 patients. Because the immune responses and the resist responses were virtually identical, I'm reporting the standard resist responses in this slide. You can see in cohort A, the mismatch repair deficient colorectal cohort, that the response rate was 62%. The disease control rate, which also includes the patients with stable disease for 12 weeks or longer, was 92%. You can see in the mismatch repair proficient colorectal cohort that the response rate was 0% with a disease control rate of 16%. And in the final cohort, the mismatch repair deficient non-colorectal cohort, the response rate was 60% with a disease control rate of 70%. You can see here in this waterfall plot looking at the target lesions, with red representing the mismatch repair proficient colon cancer cohort, and the green and the black representing the deficient cohorts, that virtually all the mismatch repair deficient tumors cluster to the right, showing response. You can see here on the spider plot that these responses were durable in a treatment refractory patient population, and many of these responses are ongoing for over a year. These are the overall survival curves, and you can see it looks very promising for the mismatch repair deficient cohorts, with the median overall survival not being reached. Whole exome sequencing was performed on a subset of patients where tumor tissue was available, and in the mismatch repair deficient cohort, we saw approximately 1,700 mutations, and in the proficient cohort, we saw approximately 70 mutations. So in summary, this is the first study to use genetics in a prospective manner to guide immunotherapy. Mismatch repair deficient tumors are highly responsive to checkpoint blockade with anti-PD-1. Mismatch repair deficiency is represented in approximately 4 to 5 percent of many tumor types, so it has broad applicability, and we saw responses in colorectal cancer, endometrial cancer, stomach cancer, small bowel cancer, and bile duct cancer. Mismatch repair deficiency is easily determined using an existing commercially available test. And these data suggest that genomics is more influential than histology for mismatch repair deficient tumors when treated with anti-PD-1. I'd like to end by thanking Merck for providing study drug, 
personal genome diagnostics for performing the sequencing and analysis, and our philanthropic funding support, especially Swim Across America, who actually funded the study. Thank you.